Mark has uh, talk, spoke to us about his huge 3D print. So um, Mark, the, um, the mind behind Luma ID, one of the best product design labs in the world, if not uh, the universe. Very good, there. very good, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this was uh, off the. This is literally delivered last week. Did anyone go to Goodwood Festival of Speed? Or I've heard of it. I've been there well, many years ago. Yeah, it was. Um, Lots of thing there. It's there? If you're a car nut. Yeah, it's really the place to go. I think it's quite world renowned now. I think it's become quite a thing. The um, you might see the the the, the Goodwood uh, uh, climb. It's like quite a famous little strip that they they now like premier cars on it's become like quite a big thing so um mercedes have uh, just re had released their um new hypercar for the first time it was unrevealed there and um yeah if you're into cars goodwood is it's pretty awesome and we were fortunate enough to do a bit of work for them last year um and i don't know about, about you guys most of you sort of work self-employed and you know you're sort of always trying to tout for work and we did i think we did a really good job last year so i was kind of thinking um they might get in touch again for something this year and been really busy the summer the summer sort of started and I thought um this was about this time last year that we went to Goodwood I just thought I'd drop the the uh the client an email and just say I haven't heard from you but is there anything we can help out with you know um, I'm terrible at do, doing marketing I sort of um generally think people remember us and kind of call us when when they need us but um and she said actually yes um and this was three weeks before the show and I don't know why I left it so late and she said would you be able to build um the Orion uh shuttle model for the show and uh and so yeah this is a little bit of that how that unfolded so less than less than four weeks ago I had that that email come through um so does anybody know about the Orion um and the SLS program that NASA's up to? No. I think this no. is one of the issues. SpaceX still the limelight, right? With with everything space related. But this has been going, I mean, this has been going now for like decades. Um, and it's, a, it's a, I mean, I don't know tons about it. I've sort of also learned on the fly. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's the sort of long-term plan to get people on the moon. So, um, uh, sorry, on to, into Mar onto Mars. Um, so this is uh, NASA and the U ESA, the European Space Agency. I didn't even really know of them before this project as well. Um, and it's a collaborative project to get this ginormous thing. So it's 5.2 meters by wide by 7.3. So it's basically a house. Um, and it's all it's been going. I think it's famous in the news at the moment for being stupidly over budget. Like it was supposed to cost five, I don't know, so the, the numbers are just insane, but it's gone some insane amount over scale, over over budget and over time. Um, but it's still going ahead. Um, and for some reason, these they were exhibiting a stand at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in the Future Labs part, which is um, if you've ever been, it's this quite cool part in the middle of Goodwood where they showcase all sorts of interesting like technology. So if it's, if you you know if you're interested in seeing, last year it was. AI farming robots and we did a little kind of PR piece for, for kids to kind of drive a little obstacle course um, and some stuff for scale electric which was mind controlled sort of which was on the BP stand so lots of really interesting things um, and I asked I actually asked someone while I was setting up why does NASA and the European Space Agency need publicity <laughs> like who uh, who doesn't you know know about this but they said Actually, the main reason is that they're really struggling to recruit um, engineers um, and get to the next generation excited about space, about STEM, um, and, and getting you know the sort of talent um, for um, you know for, for, for these sort of programs. So it wasn't really a fundraising sort of PR exercise, which is normally the case in this tech area. Um, it was uh, really to sort of grab the imaginations of of the people walking around the show and the show which is which is kind of cool so so the brief um was to, uh, literally to build the largest possible thing i could i wasn't given a a scale or anything like that i was given a budget which wasn't very much um and uh and i was just told to get it as big as i could get it um had to obviously deliver it down to Goodwood, which is in Chichester, which is which is a fair old way. Quite a bumpy road on the last little bit as well. So not the, the smoothest of places to get to. 
um, and it needed to be signed off fully in CAD um, before I could order the prints. And that had to be signed off by two parties. It had to be signed off by the European Space Agency um, to make sure that they were happy with my and you know sort of take on the on the on the on the shuttle um and the crew that were setting up the stand and as you guys know you know every every day with any project counts but you know less less than three weeks to get something um printed isn't really very much time let alone actually having to design it in cad print it assemble it and deliver it so it was really kind of stressful so it all happened on the last bank holiday that we had so fortunately, there were a couple of the, the Jubilee um, uh, weekend. So fortunately, I had a couple of days to work on the CAD um, for uh, to, to to get it made. So that was quite lucky. And then, um, yeah, they uh, sort of after quite a lot of panic and emails, and I actually pushed the button on the print before I got sign off from um, the, the 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 builders of the stand because I just couldn't sort of take the stress of having to wait any longer and I thought well I could always cancel the print you know and it's always a chicken and egg you need you need to know if the print you know if it can be done how much the time frame and all that and obviously you're also trying to get sign off and keep everybody happy and um you'll never guess what took the longest thing to get sign off for it was um it was the size of the sticker <laughs> for the NASA logo and the European Space Agency logo and they could not agree on it so the lady that was kind of orchestrated was it a difference between like three foot and an inch or was it <laughs> it it was so strange no it was like basically um because oh, I, I i haven't sort of explained it too much but there's not a lot of information on this um this model there's kind of pdfs and there's random videos but there's a lot of conceptual stuff so you never actually see many reference images to work from of the actual one but there's a, there's a couple of pdfs and the logos aren't the same there's the size of the logos and it's just the orientation and the and the size and you know they're pretty much the same but honestly they no no one could agree on it and so i actually was asked to send the final images for sign off without the logos on so i was worried about all these details and if they're going to pick up the things that i've missed and some of the um some of the sort of you know, I can't do every little bit of detail. So I had to sort of pick and choose what, what I could do. And I was so stressed about, you know, are they going to be happy? Are they going to want more detail? And the size of the sticker <laughs> was the thing that, that held up the sign off. So um, yeah, that was, that was kind of amusing. So, um, so yeah, quite an interesting brief. Um, and uh, yeah, probably out of everything, getting done, getting it delivered and made in three weeks. And, you know, normally with any sort of project like this, you um, generally like to, probably build two i mean that's a general rule of thumb for anything in exhibition based um build two case one fails on the assembly or you bugger something up with the painting or it breaks in transport or something but obviously we didn't have the luxury for that so one model um and normally i like to test things you know um this this was um this ended up being 1.2 meters uh, sort of wingspan the sort of tips of the solar panel ray um and uh, and the main print i'll show you a picture of it was a 400 mil in diameter um and so yeah these are very expensive uh giant prints and to not even have done i mean i did a very small test model just to should have shown you actually did a very quick test model to actually just see like a, a small one that i could do on my prusa on my printer here just to see the orientation and just sort of get a and i did a couple of tests with some spray cans that i ordered very rapidly off of amazon but that was it that was my like kind of you know test test mock-up um so yeah it, pr pr pretty scary to uh to go and order something kind of blindly if you like um but um that was the brief how much did it cost mark um i think about 1500 pounds in um components in sort of the 3d the various 3d printing um bureaus that i used um i used uh, laser cutting laser etching um fdm 3d printing I'll, I'll show you some pictures of that sls um and mjf so i used all kinds of different methods and then a couple of a couple of cans of spray, spray cans um uh some threaded inserts and, and a few other bits and pieces but yeah it came to about yeah 1500 quid something like that 
um which is a lot of which is you know a fair a fair chunk of, and i couldn't afford to do it again you know with the with the budget of the project so um yeah qu quite a lot um so here's the cad model and i don't know if i can just quickly show you because I, I don't know if you it's always nice to sort of see what this thing looks like in 3d um but it's very hard on computers to get an idea of scale so as i said this main diameter um was 400 millimeters and then little uh thrusters like this this little shaft on here is two millimeters hmm. so from the from the giant down to the to the absolutely tiny and this still was bigger than it was in real life um i'm not sure if i've got an image of the of the um sketches that i work from um to show you but it's quite nice sometimes to see the sort of behind the scenes of of what I had to work with, but it was sort of inconsistent reference images. Um, maybe I haven't got it on here. No, I think. Uh... Very impressive, <laughs> by the way. I've, I've, I've not dabbled with very much with 3D, but it looks fantastic. Cool, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is what I had to work with. I sort of took various reference images. And as I said, the bit, the, tr the trouble was, I in a time frame, it's nice to be given sort of rigid, parts of the brief like here's the drawing and 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 model that um but i wasn't given that i was just like given a pretty vague pdf with lots of sort of sketchy style images and i had to go online and try and like figure out which of the images to work from was the correct one so that was a little bit scary um but yeah you sort of take all the different photos um there were a few cad models i could have downloaded but they looked quite quite inaccurate and um i just thought oh, i better just to scratch build this so um but yeah it's it, the nice thing about doing something like this i mean obviously it's part of my job but this was a real passion project because to be able to study you know the various views of this i feel like i really know it it's it's strange like you look at it and you think it's all symmetrical and there's loads of things that aren't um thrusters are in in in, in, in sort of offset angles and um and yeah when windows are all slightly slightly angled and it's it's one of those things probably not many people that kind of built this that you know are sort of aware of all those details and when you when you cad model something like this up you sort of become really um familiar with it which is really cool so yeah uh, i can't remember how many thrusters there were it's like 70 in total so i suppose in space it can move in sort of all different axes and incredibly precisely and i suppose there's some fail safes on there um but yeah uh, each one of these is, is is a component so i can sort of um show you what sort of one piece looks like um and not to bore you with too many details but um this is half of the sort of shuttle piece and this took one week to print so of that three week time frame one week was just this thing sat on the printer <laughs> which is which is pretty pretty uh intense so i don't know about you if anyone messes with 3d printers but they fail quite often especially fdm printers the ones with the nozzle that, that come out so for that whole week um i was just expecting a text message saying i'm really sorry it's kind of failed midway or it was going to sort of um i don't know have a have a big hole in it or something because for speed again we could only do about two millimeter wall thickness so this thing is pretty big but really really thin so um, yeah, all, all, all quite intense. Um, and I, I decided to cut it in half like this to get the most out of the printer. So you're trying to avoid support material usually to get the best finish. If you add support material on, on any prints, they end up with quite a rough, they can end up with quite a rough um, finish and it can take longer than it needs to. So I did this very small test model. It's, it's a shame I didn't bring, bring it with me. And I noticed that it was really poor, uh, really poor finish under here where the, angle of the printer had come out and there was support material so i thought okay well that's where i'm going to split it so this section was printed this way up um, and if you notice i've put these cones in and they're designed so that the corresponding parts that go in they also don't need support material so this main thruster here for example um, that angle there won't require uh, support material so it can go it can be printed that in that orientation um and then it can nicely fit into the um into the hole um so trying to use all the tricks that i knew of to try and get the best possible result um and then this this piece was printed the other way around so this is on the bottom of the bed and and um and uh the guy that did the print is called callum at 3d tomorrow if you if anyone ever needs giant 3d prints 
I really recommend 3D Tomorrow. They're um, they're absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, so that was the uh, that was the CAD model. Um, and I'll go just go back to the uh, the PowerPoint. So yeah, quite quite pleased with that. And as I said, so we've got the sign off. Um, I think with yeah, like two and a bit weeks to go without actually having pushed the button on the printer. So quite up against it, but we got sign off without the stickers. Um, and uh, yeah, I was getting a little bit worried because uh, on the Friday, um, Callum did, uh, said he'd sent me this uh, um, through UPS. And again, I don't know if you've ever used UPS, but they're not the most reliable of of companies. And, and uh, if you miss them, that's usually the problem. If, if you miss them, it's it's kind of lost in the ether of the UPS depot. And, and so I was super nervous of not being given the uh, tracking code over the weekend. And he didn't, it, some something in his system didn't work, unfortunately. So all over the weekend, I was panicking, thinking, has he shipped it? What's going on? Unfortunately, uh, sort of um, Monday, um, by the way, the show was on the Wednesday. I had to deliver it on the Wednesday. Um, around Monday, I got a, a knock on the door and a UPS uh, delivery uh, driver came. So quite relieved to get that. And uh, yeah, this is it. Um, an absolutely monster of a print. Anyone know what Nolan is? No. That's funny. It's like, yeah, so essentially it's the name given to um, the fantastic thing of lining up all the bits on the table. That's Nolan. So there's a name oh. to them. Yeah. What, what that sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. So um, he does it a lot with his. Uh, if he, yeah. You know, he, he's um, always building props and movie replicas and all sorts of things. So before he starts any project, he puts everything out on the table, and we will spend a decent amount of time getting all the gaps. Everything. If you've got OCD, it's the best thing. <laughs> ever. Um, so yeah. So it's always good just to check check everything out, and I always like to take a picture of um, of, of the components laid out. So. Um, so yeah, this just gives you an idea of sort of the different processes that were used. So the the main the main uh, shuttle was um, the lowest resolution um, FDM printer just for just for time. I mean, I was racking my brains before we started this, thinking, what is the shape of this? And I was thinking there must be a bin or some kind of stool that I could like basically base it around. Otherwise, because it's a very simple shape, it's, you know, it's, it's, there are details on there. Um, but it isn't particularly complicated and slightly a slightly sad moment during the build I turned and looked at it and it was on the on the on the floor as we were painting a part of it and for a second it just looked like one of those stools that you get in like the co-op you know the ones that you stand on oh, the round yeah. <laughs> and for a second I double take and I thought oh my goodness that's just yeah it's a an 800 pound print that looks like a stall <laughs> slightly depressing moment so um so yeah so that was a fdm and, and kindly callum actually glued the two together for me and he actually did a bit of prep work as well so it arrived primed glued together and he's done a lot of tidying up so that was that was amazing even though i didn't know at the time it was it was coming from ups um he, he was brilliant so as i said if anyone's ever doing large scale fdm printing Drop, drop him a line. It's a, it's a great service. Um, and then these solar arrays here, again, I, wherever you can, you, you you get a spare. So I needed four, but you print five out in case uh, in case one snaps. Um, and they're the bits that hold the um, the, the solar panels. Um, the solar panels themselves were um, laser cut acrylic uh, in a sort of dark blue, and then uh, laser engraved with the sort of lines in to give the feeling of um, of the panels. And then, um, oh, and then um, all the little details here. Um, there's a there's a process called MJF, which is the um, sort of superseding SLS, which is the sort of best quality nylon printing. Um, it's a sintered process, um, and uh, the price on this is come all coming down massively now. So you can get these incredibly detailed uh, model you know sort of miniature model level of quality. It's not quite it's not resin. Um, they're a lot stronger than resin. Um, and uh, I chose that as a process because you just couldn't get that sort of detail in in uh, in the FDM printers. So the FDM is great for big, smooth, basic shapes, um, but you would have a lot of these little details would have been lost if you chose that technology. So quite a few different processes there. Um, the the and, white bag looks metallic. It looks almost chrome. Is it just uh, this one? Was the uh, this one here? Yeah. Yeah, so that they're just um, brass uh, threaded inserts. 
Okay. Um, so I'm a big fan of. Um, so in all, so that was the thing. This is this was going to be hung right, but that was again not signed off. I was asked to provide engineering calculations and all sorts, and I was like, I don't even know what I'm. <laughs> I mean, I like, <laughs> I've got like day, I've got hours to get this done. So that I was like, basically, what we decided on doing was actually running a rim um, around it. It's like a little, uh, a couple of rims, and the idea was that as a belts and braces no need to have calculations um we put these threaded insets in so you can run four of these uh, eyelets that could go in and mm. then you could actually run a piece of wire all the way around in two places so in theory you're not actually relying on the strength of those of those threaded inserts because we didn't know the weight at the time they were asking me weights and the center of gravity and all sorts of things and i'm like i have no idea this is you know we just have to kind of um and obviously it's in a public place and no, thousands of people yeah. are going to walk through it so it's a little bit of a scary sort of well we sort of have to wing it um so uh, yeah they're just threaded inserts and, and brass eyelets um so i'm very lucky where where i've just moved to i have um a warhammer uh painter like retired professional <laughs> so hobbyist is <laughs> absolutely amazing um and he was a lifesaver in the project so um he was a bit of my sounding board so i was kind of sharing the progress of of the build um and uh and he offered to help me paint so without without my without a good neighbor sometimes some projects are impossible so um through um through some yeah so a fairly long couple of long days so the print arrived monday um sort of afternoon um and um yeah, we had to deliver it Wednesday morning. I had to get it signed off Wednesday at Goodwood. So, so yeah, and and, and not to make the story too long, I, I don't want to wrap on too much. I did get a weird stomach flu bug thing oh. on the Monday. And so um, about four o'clock after this thing arrived and we were just starting to paint it up, I couldn't carry on. I was absolutely wiped out. I don't know if anyone else picked this weird thing up and I wasn't sure if it was stress-induced. Probably was a bit or, um, or was just unlucky. But... Um, yeah, I was hit with this horrible virus fluey thing. Um, so at four o'clock, I was just, I couldn't even like push the threaded insets in. I was just like, I thought, oh God, this is, this is a disaster. <laughs> so um, I just had to stop. And then um, on the Tuesday, um, felt, felt a bit better. And then we worked through it on the Tuesday. But um, yeah, my neighbor just really helped me weather everything. Um, the, so it ended up, wow. in the boot the, ended up in the boot of the car. I'd love to talk to you more about the sort of weather inside, but anyway, we're re really, really happy with the, with the way that ended up looking. Looks fantastic. Um, thank you. And then the, the, the scariest moment of the whole thing, I'm still slightly uh. sweating from the flu <laughs> thing that I had, but I had to go, I had to hold this thing while this um, rigor was, uh, you know, I'd, it had never been actually uh, supported on its own weight. So these, these two, these four solar arrays, I was, I didn't sleep the night before because I was just so worried about them just basically snapping. <laughs> because wow. basically the acrylic ended up being three times thicker than it should have been so it was a lot heavier than it should have been um so uh, watching this thing <clears throat> going up on this rigger and uh and being yanked around i've never sort of been so sort of stressed out in my life <laughs> trying to look calm while it's going uh yeah sort of 12 uh maybe more feet in the in the air um but anyway it was a success and um oh, brilliant. <laughs> and, we, and i would i didn't get to meet tim peak but oh. at the show uh yeah he uh he and some of the other um and some of the team from um uh the sa were there and they, they they'd like to keep the model so it ended up being a success excellent Good Good thanks <laughs> i saw a post that followed your NASA ESA project, the, the, the Batman bust. And uh, I noticed the uh, the top of his head went oh, a little this bit guy. awry. This is my, this was uh, <laughs> printed on my Prusa. So I we, we really wanted to do a weathered Batman. So you can buy it, you can download this model for free. Um, and uh and i you know with my neighbor my, my new best friend as you can as you can tell he's <laughs> awesome. um i wanted to get into painting but i didn't want to go down the really small like warhammer stuff because it's so tiny so i thought i can use my printer i can print a bust um and yeah every time i printed it it failed like here like it, his head kind of <laughs> i don't know what happened <laughs> but it would shift over to the side and so it meant i had to um and I, this thing was like 10 hours print so it was like a real waste to just have to do it again 
So um, I, yeah, chopped the top of his head off, printed just the top piece on the printer and, uh, and glued it on and then used a bit of um, sanding and everything. And you, you really can't tell yeah. where the, where the yeah, seam line is. And it's a, it's a weathered kind of beaten up approach on Batman. But um, if, you, if you go on uh, Thingiverse and a few other places, there's some really awesome busts that you can download of characters. Um, and I think a lot of the really, like some, some modelers do that, the, the guy's name's on the bottom of it. And I think the idea is that you sort of download his free model, go and follow him on social media. And then you realize they do, he does all sorts of busts and they're in the sort of hundreds of dollars and you sort of purchase those ones. But um, yeah. if anyone's got a Prusa sitting there, the other one actually that you guys, this is another project and uh, I broke my printer and it's probably because I've been doing doing this i'm printing a t-rex skeleton Ooh, and this is another okay. free to download model so this dude is uh is massive it's going to end up being i don't know almost um almost a meter long with its tail and um that's going to be my next little weather in projects one of the one of the pieces of its leg <laughs> it's like a chicken bone <laughs> so um <laughs> If uh, yeah, if anyone wants to print something, from, they're thinking, well, what can I do with my printer? It's not just you know, engineering mechanical objects. There's a lot of really cool things like this that you can. Yeah, print. my my son would love that. He would go nuts. It's a good well, excuse to get a printer. Yeah. <laughs>